Hi, my name is Andrea Schmidt, data scientist at LEAI, and I'm going to be showing you how I, um, how I created a retail sales dashboard and how I analyze the dashboard and extract insights from it. Okay, so this is, just to give you a quick idea, before I show and go through this dashboard with you, and I actually have three dashboards, this is regional sales, and I separated these out from doing a SKU analysis versus a store analysis. So these are actually three separate dashboards. Uh, but first I'm gonna go through region insights, region sales insights. And let's look at the data set first, just to, uh, let me just say edit, just to show you. Once you upload, this data is living right now in an S3 bucket, and once you make that S3 bucket connection and, and you can edit your data within QuickSight itself, but you basically import it in. Uh, you want it to be mostly clean when you import it in. But once you have it imported in all of the fields labeled, it can automatically, you can schedule it to automatically refresh the data. So that's how you get live real-time insights, is this is the data living in the S3 bucket. Right now, if I update that data or update my data set at any point in time, it will show me on the hour, every hour, updated information. And that's how you get live dashboards. So this is the data. Uh, it's weekly sales data. And there's different types of stores, classification. I think there's A, B, and C. The size of that store in square feet. The city it's located in. The stock keeping unit, or SKU. The store ID number. Um, and then the Sales density and month were calculated fields I did within QuickSight itself. I just want to know sales per square foot. And what you can, because that what that will give me later on is I aggregate um, maybe for you know all the stores in San Antonio, I can sum up the sales density and know how many square footage in total is located in San Antonio among all stores in San Antonio. And, um, and analyze insights from there. But I'll show you that a little bit later. Let's get back to the dashboard. So I go to the QuickSight home and I have what are analyses and dashboards. Analyses are kind of like work in progress analyses and then dashboards are published analyses. So you can change each of the analysis to have a different dashboard which is then the shareable unit. Um, and the live published unit that your whoever you're sharing your data with or your dashboard with has um, has insights into. But the analysis is kind of the edit mode, and I like to work in analysis before looking at the dashboard. Okay, so let's go to region analysis. And remember, these are weekly sales. This is how you aggregate. You can change this. You can go drill up or down to year, quarter, or month, or get... Um, if your data is capable, mine's weekly, that's the smallest granularity, so I'm going to keep it there. Um, but you can go down to the minute if you have, um, you know, very granular data. So we're going to just walk through each of these, and I'm going to tell you how I read it. So this um, is obviously sales over time for each of these regions. I call them regions, they're cities. Um, Plano, Houston, Fort Worth, Austin, and by hovering over you can see the weekly sales at each of these time points. Um, just without even going into detail, looking at it, we see, okay, sales are pretty steady over time uh, with spikes happening around November and December, which makes sense because you have major retail holiday season happening. Um, Black Friday, and then of course Christmas, or the, um, the end of your holiday season. And then uh, you can see who are overall are the best performers, and San Antonio stands out at the top, and then you can see down here we have Austin is performing down here. But they all mirror each other pretty, pretty well. Like if you look at this spike July 1st, all of them get a little spike on that July 1st. Uh, if you go over here, you see a dip. So 
all these stores perform pretty according, you know, from one region to the next relatively equally or they mirror each other just in different scale. So yeah, we're looking at Austin is performing. Yes, it's performing lower at a different scale, but it's mirroring the same pattern as you would see in Corpus Christi or San Antonio. So that's what this is telling me here. What I do have the capability of is drilling down and, and getting really um, zooming in or zooming out of the data. And then, um, of course, you can say you can click on here and say, I only want to fo focus on Corpus Christi. And it will then reconfigure this whole image to show only Corpus Christi data. But I don't think that's necessary here. So let's move on to insights. Uh, QuickSight has this cool feature. It's you can add a, it's called an insight. And these are these pre config you can configure your custom insights, but these are some of the out of the box pre configured ones. So I want to know, you know, say I just want to keep track of the top ranking and bottom ranking cities as far as sales goes of all time, meaning, you know, ever since data is recorded for each of these stores. So this is going to tell me San Antonio, Corpus Christi, and Fort Worth are the top performing cities of all time, and um, Austin, Dallas, and Plano are at the bottom. Now when I say all time, I should preface this by saying that this data set I imported is only for a short period of time. It's a sample data, it's based on real data, but it's sample data from you know January 2010 to October 2012. So. Um, keep that in mind. They're not full years, you know, 2012 years kind of cut off. And, um, and so just keep that in mind. But this in a production environment, this would be updated with, you know, of all time. So all your data that you would want to include. Then we want to look at top movers from the previous, uh, previous year and top movers year to date. And then compare that with the bottom movers and bottom movers year to date. So this is going to look at last year and this year. These are kind of relative relative insights. So based on this, what I'm going to look at here, and one thing I notice is, is look at cities like, okay, San Antonio decreased, year to date is decreasing, you know, a little bit. However, San Antonio is a top mover last year and it's not a top mover this year so what's that just telling me is that san antonio had an you know an awesome year last year and it's not really it's maybe topping out it's not growing anymore maybe it's staying steady i wouldn't say 0.3 percent is a real decline but um but it is slightly declining and when it's year to date we have to keep in mind this isn't um this is showing from october 26 2011 versus year-to-date, October 26, 2012. So the other thing to note is that um, Fort Worth was a top mover last year, and it is a top mover year-to-date this year. So that's saying Fort Worth, this is the second year of growth for Fort Worth. Um, now looking at Austin is a, you know, had a, had a pretty bad year in 2011 and might want to investigate that. It's one of the worst performings of all time, but it looks like it's, you know, on a steady decline then. So um, that might be something to investigate. Dallas decreased by 42% and last year and it is decreasing this year. That means it's its second year in decline. So this might be something, hey, we need uh, intervention here in Dallas. It's its second year in decline. And then El Paso, uh, last year it decreased a lot, but this year it's a top mover. It's in the top mover, not by much, right? It's 2.7% when you see these percentages, keep that in mind. But it's, you know, you can see it's turning around. So something is going on, my ask, what's going on in El Paso that is, is starting to turn around sales? Went from a bottom mover previous year to it's one of the top movers this year. So this is how you compare top movers, bottom movers, and rankings. Being able to look at that and then say, okay, well, why are there these relationships happening?
Then I always like to put a pivot table in there. Pivot tables are very familiar to analysts and everybody. Everybody is familiar with using Excel and pivot tables to do analytics. So I never want to take that out of a dashboard if I, if I have the ability to include a pivot table because it is a, um, a very familiar and quick way to get some detailed data. So, okay, these are all great, but what if I want to go over and say, okay, well, El Paso, what are those numbers from, you know, 2012, 2011, 2010? What about total for the state of Texas? If these are all my stores in the state of Texas, you know, I'm doing, what is that? 2.4 billion. That's, that's a big number. Um, you know, 2.4 billion in 2011 versus 2 billion this year. I know I have about two months left in the year. So, you know, uh, that's the kind of the target I'm looking for. And I can keep track of of these numbers in real time as, um, as 2012 gets updated with their sales information every week. So since I know I'm in 2012, this is going to change. These can also, you can drill this down to quarter. You can do this monthly. Um, but here I'm just having it as an annual comparison against the different cities. Then we have some of sales by city. This is just a visual way to say, all right, 50% of my sales uh, happen in three, three cities in Texas, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, and Fort Worth. So that's important to note. And one thing you'd want to keep an eye on is any changes in this pattern. So here we have 50%, three cities, and then um, the rest of the cities are over here. So good, quick visual. Anomalies are, um, it's an internal algorithm, anomaly detection algorithm out of the box that runs. You can configure this to run on different attributes. I wanted to look, of, of course, and compare sales in different cities. So all it did is the anomaly detection went through. And again, weekly data, keep in mind. So total weekly sales between Houston, Dallas, and Plano were all lower than expected. This will also pick up higher than expected sales. Um, and then you can set it to pick up, I, you know, I put it at three anomalies, but you can put five, you can put 10, you can put one or two, you can put as many as you want in. You can customize this insight here. It's just nice to have. Uh, so this is kind of a way to flag things so you, you can investigate, all right, what's going on in Houston, lower than expected, uh, then you know you might go up here and say, okay, I wanna focus in and you know see what's going on in Houston or maybe call some of the stores and see what their feedback is. There's a map feature in QuickSight, which if you have um, G, you know, geolocation data, it takes longitude, latitude, city, state, uh, any kind of geographic type of attribute you can have in your data set, you can map it out. And this is interactive and in that you can zoom out to see a big picture or zoom in. And then when you configure this map, you do have the ability to add dimensionality to it. I don't want to add dimensionality, but it can, you know, if I, if I wanted the color to be on... Um, I guess we could say type, you know, what type of stores. And then you zoom in. I don't find this feature all that helpful for this specific data set, but you can then zoom into Dallas, hover over it and see the different types, you know, store A, B, and C, or store type A, B, and C and what their sales are. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and zoom back out again. And this is good if you're, you know, if you have an analyst that isn't familiar with a certain area and they're gonna wanna see like, okay, well maybe the reason why, you know, Plano or Dallas, you know, they're, they're located really close to each other, maybe that has some sort of impact on the sales between them. And then this is a nice, um, I use the sales density 
attribute that I created inside of QuickSight and compared it against sales in a scatter plot, and then sized, these are each of the, the regions, and then sized each region by its, um, let me click on this, by its, the sum of the size. So this is gonna sum up all the square footage in Corpus Christi. This is gonna sum up all the square footage in San Antonio and Plano, El Paso, Dallas, and Austin, respectively. So this gives you an idea of how many square feet of retail space I have in each of these areas, and then what are the overall sales versus the density sales per square foot. So you can see here, like, wow, San Antonio has high sales and high sales density, meaning you are really maxing out your, your square footage in San Antonio, where, you know, you have kind of maybe you know, you expect a, a little bit of a linear relationship because sales density is related to sales. Um, but you can see some of the, you know, well, why, if, if there's equal square footage in Corpus Christi, um, but it's, it's square foot sales density is not utilized as heavily, right? So um, you still have great overall sales, but sales, you know, when you compare it to the square footage, then... Um, it's not, it's, you know, not performing as well as San Antonio. And then you can see, wow, you know, okay, Austin, Dallas, not a lot of square footage um, and kind of low sales. So that makes sense, right? You're not going to have as high of sales if you don't have the square footage for products. So that makes sense to me. Uh, then looking at, I wanted to see store type, another, another type of visual, what type of stores exist in each of these regions and are represented. So this is stores, you know, sales coming from C level, B level, and A level stores. And again, A, B, and C correlate to the square footage. So we have 70,000, or no, sorry. $70 million in sales coming from type C stores. And respectively, you have 93 million coming from type B. And you can see type A, which are the big, larger um, classification of stores, larger square footage, they get more sales. Again, it's very intuitive, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then the smaller stores get smaller sales. So this can all affect your strategy. And Corpus Christi only has big stores. So maybe that's why it's one of the top performers. Doesn't take out, you know, you know, here we go. Store C um, still performs very, very well. This small square footage store performs almost, you know, equally as well as its, you know, Fort Worth's larger square footage. So just giving you insight into the type of stores that exist in each city, the square footage in each city, and and how that breaks down um, in the sales between them. And that, I'm gonna wrap it up here for the region sales. I'm gonna cut off the video because I don't want my video to be too long, but I'm gonna pick it back up again and I'm gonna show you next the store analysis, which is another, um, another dashboard I did diving deeper into the same data set.